Hello and welcome to the Maths 2 component of the online BSc program on data science and programming. In this video, we are going to talk about limits for sequences. In our previous video, we have seen the idea of tangents and we saw that it is a really uh, tricky question as to what is a tangent and uh, when does when does it exist and we saw some uh, examples towards the end which motivated that there is some, uh, some more uh, depth to that question. And uh, indeed, this is a deeper question than, than uh, it seems just from geometry and for this reason, one has to start getting into what is called calculus. So, we have seen calculus uh, in some form uh, presumably in high school uh, or maybe you have not, uh, but presumably you may not have seen what uh, the form that we are going to use it in now. So, we are going to do a little bit of, um, we are going to develop a little bit of theory and we will then use that theory to get our handle on the idea of tangents much better. So, the, the we are going to approach it from something called the notion of differentiability. Okay, so, without, uh, I am already getting ahead of myself. So, without uh, spending more time, let me start uh, this video, which is about limits for sequences. Okay, so, let me first um, uh, start by looking at the following question. Let us look at the sequence of numbers 2 minus 1 by n as n increases. So, before this maybe I should first ask what is a sequence or I should first mention what is a sequence. So, a sequence is a set of it is uh, an assignment for each uh, number n there is some corresponding number uh, which we will call maybe a n. So, in this case a n is 2 minus 1 by n. So, as n increases your sequence a sequence of numbers a n also changes and the question is as uh, n increases what happens to this sequence of numbers. So, one possible sequence of numbers is uh, let us say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right this is a sequence of numbers. Another possible sequence of numbers is let us say uh, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 yeah that goes on. So, you could write this in a more uh, tangible fashion as minus 1 to the power n or another possible sequence of numbers is uh, uh, um, let us say half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, uh, 1 sixteenth, uh, 1 by 32, 1 by 64. Yeah, if, if you know these numbers well, you will you can tell that this is the sequence 1 over 2 to the power n, right. But of course, the sequence need not have a closed form. So, the sequence could could just be for uh, you know for each n you associate some number that is it. So, that is a sequence. Okay. So, here is the sequence 2 minus 1 by n and let us ask what happens as uh, as n increases. So, if you look at uh, what happens as n increases uh, let us try to play this video and see what happens. So, as, as n increases you can see on the left hand side you have 2 minus 1 over n. So, you can see what is n as n increases it will change. For example, the next term is 2 minus 1 by 2, the term after that is 2 minus 1 by 3 and its value is on the right hand side. Okay. So, keep track of what happens to the value as your n changes. Okay. Now, let me play this. Okay. So, as you can see as your n is increasing, well you have 1.98, 1.988, 1.989, 1.99, 1.993, 1.1999, 1.1999, 1.1999. So, you can see this this is increasing and here below is the real line uh, the part between let us say 1 and 2.2 and uh, if I play that again you can see how th the geometry of, of the sequence. So, the first term is 2 minus half which is 1.5 the next term is 2 minus 1 third so that is 1.66 and if I play it further you can see that the red dot comes closer and closer and closer and closer to 2 and um, as your n increases now it is 130 uh, it is going to come very 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 close as it is uh, 200 where I have stopped this sequence it is really close to 2 yeah it is 1.995. Okay. Okay. So, so, you can tell that as n is going to become very 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 large this sequence is going to come very 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 close to the number 2. So, in other words this red dot is going to come even closer to this uh, point 2. Okay, that is that is what this means geometrically and that is what it means in terms of your algebra or your numbers that it is going to come close to the value 2. 
okay so let's do the same thing for the sequence 2 minus 1 by n squared okay i i want to do this because uh, uh, i want to see the speed with which uh, this this works so if you do it for 2 minus 1 by n squared well you can see it went very 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 fast so it's at already at 50 and we are at 1.9996 okay let me re replay that so here's your first term 2 minus 1 by 1 squared so the the number is 1 and the red dot is at the position 1 on the real line and as you go ahead you get 2 minus 1 by 2 squared that is 2 minus 1 fourth 2 minus 1 by 3 squared 2 minus 1 ninth and as you can see it is already on the third term itself it is 1.8889 it took much longer for um, the sequence uh, 2 minus 1 by n and uh, yeah, another few terms and it is 1.97. So, it is very close and if I play that okay, 29, 30 and look at what is happening it is 1.999 already. Okay. So, this number as you can see it comes very close to 2 in fact uh, the if you look at the line our points are not fine enough to distinguish between these numbers 2 and 1.9996. So, this red dot is already it seems as if it is sitting at 2 but it is not it is actually very close but not not exactly 2 and you can see as n increases this sequence is going to the sequence of going of numbers is going to come closer and closer and closer to the number 2 ok. Let us do one more example just to motivate further what is happening. So, here is a slightly more complicated sequence it is a sequence 2 minus 1 divided by 1 plus log n to the power 1.1 ok and uh, to check what is happening well we again have the same counter and this time I am going to play it going to play it for a much longer time and you will see why ok now it is 1.83 1.84 look at that red dot it is moving very slowly yeah it is moving 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 but now it is very slow and we are already well past where we were in our previous sequences we are now at closing on 300 still not past 1.9 in fact, at this point if I stop it right it is at 367 you may feel well maybe it is not going to 2 maybe it is going to stop before 2. So, well let us play it further and now it is coming closer to 1.9 it is 1.88 but those numbers are moving very slowly that yeah, is past 500 already and the red dot is closing on 1.9. So, I want you, have, you to have a visual feel of what, what convergence of sequences is right limits of sequences. So, here here we are now where we are at 9 n is 800 or 900 and we are still not past 1.9, but you can see it is coming close. Now, we are, we are going to come closer and closer and closer and uh, you probably feel that okay, very soon we will cross 1.9 indeed we are very close to doing that ah, there we are we have crossed 1.9 and now the red dot is on the other side and very 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 slowly you can see n is very large now it is close almost 1400 it is moving but now it is very slow right still at 1.90 and uh, we can keep going I will just take you till the end and uh, I have stopped at 2000 meaning when I say I have stopped at 2 or rather 2001, I have stopped at the 2001th element of this term of this sequence or element in this sequence. So, what is that term? It is 2 minus 1 by 1 plus log of 2001 the whole to the power 1.1 okay, or rather strange looking and where have we gone? We have come till 1.90628. So, this is a very slow moving sequence, but my claim is and uh, I will encourage you to check that this sequence indeed as as your n becomes very 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 large this number will come very 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 close to 2 right. So, this number is going to come very very cl very close to 2 or in other words this red dot this red point which denotes uh, that sequence is going to come very 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 close to the number 2 yeah it will keep moving, but it is going to come very slowly yeah. So, the first sequence 2 minus 1 by n that we had this was a reasonably fast moving sequence within 200 terms we came to 1.9 uh, 
five. The second sequence which was two minus one by n squared. Within fifty terms, we came till one point nine 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 six, and the third sequence. Well, we went till the two thousand one th term, and we still had one point nine zero six. So, this is uh, you know there's also an issue of how fast does it does a limit uh, does it approach a limit? And the first one is reasonable, the second one is fairly fast, and the third one is relatively slower. Okay, so you may see these ideas coming up again in in some other course, completely unrelated to what we are doing now. Uh, and in case you do uh, that in the pro in the programming part maybe, and in case you do, uh, you may want to think of this again. Okay, so with that uh, with that motivation for what is the limit of a sequence. Let us uh, define this uh, explicitly. So, what is the limit of a sequence? So, let a n be a sequence of real numbers. We say that a n has limit a, which is some other real number, or it could be one of the real numbers already appearing in your sequence. If as n increases, the numbers a n come closer and closer to a. Okay. So, that is that is the intuitive definition of a of the limit of a sequence. Now, it is natural to ask what do we mean by closer and closer and that is something I am not going to get into. Okay? There is a more formal abstract definition uh, mathematical definition for what it means to come closer and closer and I am not going to get there. Okay? So, we are going to just see enough to be able to uh, make out what is going on. Okay? We, we would not be doing details here. Okay? What is what are other ways of saying the same things? So, uh, this so the above statement was that the uh, sequence has limit a okay if this happens what is other equivalent terminology a n tends to a that means the same thing that the sequence a n has limit a a n converges to a again same thing limit a n is equal to a that is a notation you may come across in if you read books or uh, uh, if you happen to look on the internet, a n again arrow a again means that the sequence a n uh, has limit a, a n arrow a and above that n tends to infinity or sometimes it is below that again has the same meaning that the sequence a has a n has limit a okay? or just simply limit a n is a that also means that the sequence as n tends to infinity, the sequence has limit a. Okay, or sometimes you may have the same thing with the bracket, uh, or with or with the n tends to infinity, or without the n tends. So all of these are notations for the same statement. So all of these mean the same thing. So all of these mean that uh, the sequence a n. has limit a. Okay. So, I may often use the first two a n tends to a or a n converges to a uh, in place of a n has limit a and uh, do not be confused by that that is exactly why I, I had this slide up. So, what does this mean? Mm, let us come back to that which is the more important part. It means that as n becomes larger and larger these numbers a n come closer and closer to a okay. that is that is what you have to take home from here. Okay, Let us do some more terminology. Uh, a sequence a n is called convergent if it converges to some limit. Yeah, so, by limit we mean some real number. So, for example, um, the sequence 1 by n is convergent and it has limit 0. Yeah, if you look at the sequence 1 by n, you can see that as n increases, n becomes very, very, very large. The numbers 1 by n become very, very, very small. When I say small, I mean they are positive and are small. So, as uh, n becomes very large, the numbers 1 by n are going to come closer and closer to 0. Right? So, this is an example of a convergent sequence. A sequence a n is called divergent if it is not convergent. Okay? If it is not convergent, it is divergent. That means, uh, these numbers uh, do not converge to a limit which is a real number or do not converge at all. Okay? They may float around. Right? So, here is an example this is an example that we saw right at the beginning of this video. 
the sequence 1 minus 1 to the power n is divergent. What is the sequence? Well, the first term is minus 1 to the power 1 that is minus 1, the second term is minus 1 to the power 2 which is 1, third term is minus 1 to the power 3 which is minus 1. So, this sequence is minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, right. So, this sequence is what is called oscillating, yeah, it oscillates minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1. So, clearly this sequence does not have any limit, right, it is not coming close to any uh, real number. So, this is an example of a divergent sequence. Uh, uh, we will come to more examples, uh, but let me um, define what is called a subsequence of a sequence. So, a subsequence of a sequence is a new sequence formed by possibly excluding some entries of a sequence. Okay. So, if you, if you have a sequence, so you have a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, yeah, you have this sequence of real numbers and you drop some, some of those. Yeah, you just take let us say a 1, a 4, a 20, a 100, a 1 million and so on yeah, some in some prescribed uh, order. So, whatever you get is a subsequence of, of uh, this sequence. So, some uh, often what you do is you drop some uh, uh, some interesting terms which are given by some mathematical way. For example, you can say let us take all the odd uh, part of this sequence. So, that means you take the first term, third term, fifth term, seventh term and so on or you can say take the even part of the sequence which is the second, fourth, sixth, eighth and so on. So, here is an example. So, here is your sequence minus 1 1 minus 1 1 this is exactly the divergent sequence that we had above and here is your subsequence which is the one which is highlighted in that sequence that is the even terms right. So, that is the second, fourth, sixth, eighth and so on and if you do that you get minus 1 to the power 2, minus 1 to the power 4, minus 1 to the power 6 and so on. So, those give you exactly ones yeah. So, your subsequence is 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 right. I could of course, take other kinds of subsequences which also have the same form. So, I can take the let us say the fourth term, the eighth term, the twelfth term and so on right. So, minus 1 to the power 4 n. So, if you do that you still get the same numbers in your subsequence, but it is a different subsequence than the one written down because that is this subsequence is the one obtained by taking the second, fourth, sixth, eighth and so on whereas, the one I just said right now is the one obtained by taking the fourth, eighth, twelfth and so on. So, as sequences these are the same, but as subsequences of this sequence they are different. Okay. So, some uh, some small quibbling here and may, may not be important as we go ahead, but uh, something to keep in mind as for those of you who are more mathematically inclined. Okay. Uh, so, I hope you, you have a feeling for what is a sequence what is the limit of a sequence, when is a sequence convergent which is exactly saying it has a limit, when is a sequence divergent which means it does not have a limit. So, we had this oscillating sequence, let us uh, write down another example of a sequence which is or maybe I, I think uh, next slide we have more examples. So, here is an example of a sequence which is divergent, but in a different way than, than the previous one. So, the sequence n is divergent, what happens to the sequence n? So, that is the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this sequence does not have any limit, right. If you take any real number, let us say I take the real number 2 million, yeah. At some stage, this, this sequence will, will go beyond this uh, real number and it will keep going much, much, much beyond, right. It does not come close as n increases, right. So, there is no real number to which it comes close. Now, some of you may, of course, uh, have heard of this. Uh, uh, concept of infinity. In fact, I I mentioned that concept uh, previously also uh, in the slide where I define terminology. So, infinity we think of as something which is very very it is something larger than any any number that we know right any real number that we know right. So, you can say that this sequence converges to infinity right. So, in this case uh, we can actually say that this sequence converges to infinity but as far as our notations are concerned, it is still a divergent sequence. So, you, you could say it converges to infinity, you could say it diverges to infinity or you could just say this sequence is divergent which is correct. So, the previous two things saying it converges to infinity or diverges to infinity uh, say more than just saying it is divergent, 
right but but this sequence is divergent so that that's what you have to keep in mind that it is divergent okay same thing for minus n the sequence minus n now what is the sequence it's minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 and so on so as you go ahead this sequence is going to become the numbers in the sequence are going to become very 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 small and when I mean small I do not mean positive and small I mean really small in the negative sense right and if you take any real number eventually this sequence will cross that real number. So, if you take let us say minus uh, 1003.89 then if you look at the 1000 term that is minus 1000 if you take the next term that is minus 1001 minus 1002 minus 1003 minus 1004 and you have gone beyond right you have gone smaller and it keeps becoming smaller. So, it does not come close to this number right and that that is true of any number. So, it cannot converge to any real number it cannot have limit any real number right. Now, again if you have heard of this concept of minus infinity which is sort of on the other side of the real axis it is what is called what colloquially we say it is smaller than any uh, number any real number that we know then you can say that this sequence diverges to minus infinity or it converges to minus infinity both are equally valid and depend on the context or you can just say the sequence minus n is divergent. But I want to point out that these two sequences n and minus n are different from the other the previous example of the of the of divergence that we saw which was the sequence minus 1 to the power n which is minus 1 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1. So, that has no it just jumps around right it has no uh, concept of it really does not converge in any sense whereas, these sequences they are really going off yeah, but maybe they are going to something which is beyond our universe yeah, uh, uh, whereas, which means to say that our universe is the real line and it is going beyond that. Okay. So, there is a slight difference in, in these two types of divergence, but uh, that is some pedantic point that we can ignore for this uh, lecture course those who are interested in mathematics can think more about this. Okay, Let us look at some more sequ uh, sequences. Huh. So, here is a the first example of what is called a series uh, which I have made into a sequence. So, you look at this sequence what is the sequence it is the sequence summation x to the power k by k factorial. right? So, the nth term of this sequence is this sum. So, for example, what is the second term? The second term is x to the power 0 by 0 factorial plus x to the power 1 by 1 factorial plus x to the power 2 by 2 factorial that is the second term. Okay. So, if you have uh, seen the exponential before you can observe that if n tends to infinity this is just summation k is equal to 0 to infinity x to the power k by k factorial which is exactly what we call e to the power x this is how we define e to the power x. Yeah. So, e to the power x is defined as whatever this number is. Okay. Well, of course, you can ask well if I know what is e then why not raise it to a power certainly that is correct, uh, but then what is e and e is indeed defined in this way by taking x to be 1. Yeah. So, if you take uh, summation 1 by k factorial that is exactly the number e that is how you define the number e and then you work out what the value is which is what Euler did and so on that is why it is one of the reasons it is named after him. Okay. So, keep in mind this is e to the power x that that is what you need to remember. Okay. Similarly, if you take the numbers 1 plus x by n to the power n then this converges to e to the power x. So, the limit of this sequence is e to the power x. So, what is what are the terms in the sequence if you take x uh, if you take n to be 1 then this is 1 plus x to the power 1 if you take n to be 2 then this is 1 plus x by 2 to, to the power 2 and so on. And this sequence converges to e to the power x now this is you may if you are seeing limits for the first time I am sure this is appearing a little uh, daunting. The point I am trying to make is do not try to figure out why this limit is e to the power x. So, you take these as a black boxes that this is e to the power x. Okay. 
Okay, and then similarly here is something that you may see in statistics which is why I have mentioned it, it comes about in uh, in some proofs in regarding the normal distribution and so on, uh, something called Stirling's formula. So, from there whatever that is, you can tell that the sequence n times root 2 pi n by n factorial whole to the power 1 by n very complicated looking sequence converges to E, the something we know. Okay. Again black box keep this in mind okay. and uh, similarly we, we have um, n by the nth root of n factorial again converges to E. So, you can see that these, these notions of sequence are very useful and important because whatever this thing E is the exponential which we have seen uh, which, which is you know something which comes up in many 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 places uh, somehow it is very important in mathematics and statistics and uh, science and technology at its very heart is this, this idea of sequences. So, you cannot really ex escape from sequences. So, every time you are doing an exponential there is some sequence in the background only thing is we 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 know how to deal with it and that is why uh, we do not keep repeating it all the time. Okay. But I want you to understand that uh, behind exponentials is, is this notion of sequences and series and you do not need to understand it very well. What you need to understand is there are these sequences for which the limit is the exponential function or E and that is what you need to keep in mind. Okay. Fine. Let us write down some useful rules regarding convergence of sequences. Uh, this is what really helps to uh, know when a sequence converges. So, often what will happen is you will have um, a sequence and you want to know whether it converges or not and well you cannot keep evaluating right. What we did in our first few slides was we took the sequence and we took large n and we plotted it and we saw how did that red dot move, is it moving close to something, is it not moving close to something. You cannot really do that even in the third example which was 1 plus uh, oh sorry 2 minus 1 by 1 plus log n whole to the power 1.1 you saw it moved so slowly that you really do not know it moves to 2. How do I know it moves it, it converges to 2? So, we should have some theoretical way of seeing that and indeed that is what we will do. We will have some sequences for which we know what the limits are those were exactly the sequences we have described before and then we will use those sequences to uh, study other sequences and these rules and try to determine when they converge or diverge. Okay. So, here is one some such uh, here are some such rules. So, if a n tends to a then every subsequence of a n also converges to a seems very logical. If a sequence is going to a if you throw out a few terms and take uh, take the subsequence given that will also converge to a. If a n tends to a and b n tends to a then the sum converges to the sum. So, a n plus b n tends to a plus b. Similarly, if you have a n tends to a and you scalar multiply each of these numbers a n by c, then c times a n tends to c times a, a n tends to a and b n tends to b, then a n minus b n tends to a minus b. You can in fact, uh, derive this from the previous 2, 2 and 3, a n tends to a, b n tends to b, then the product which means a n times b n tends to a times b, a n tends to a and f is a polynomial function in one variable, very important it is a polynomial function then f of a n tends to f of a again you can derive this from your previous uh, from 2, 3, 4 and 5. If a n tends to a and b n tends to b, a, b and b is not 0 very important then a n divided by b n tends to a divided by b. Okay. So, these are all rules we, we have to prove these and indeed uh, this is done in the first course on calculus, but uh, we are not going to do it in this course. If a n tends to a and c tends c belongs to r then c to the power a n tends to c to the power a. Okay. Again something you can imagine being true if a n tends to a and c is in r such that a n is positive for all n and you have a n c is greater than 0 then log of a n to the base c tends to log of a to the base c. Okay. And finally, this is a very useful and important principle called the sandwich principle. So, if a n tends to a and b n tends to a, so you have two sequences tending to the same number. Okay. 
they have the same these sequences have the same limit. So, A is the limit for A n and A is also the limit for B n and C n is a sequence such that C n is between A n and C, uh, B n. Okay. So, here is A n and here is B n and C n is the middle. Okay. Then as, as you can see if A n and B n tend to something C n will also tend to that thing that is exactly why it is called the sandwich principle. So, C n is sandwiched between A n and B n and if you use these 10 rules and some known results like the ones we described before most of the sequences that you have to deal with are are really uh, can be dealt with using them these rules okay so here's uh, two examples that i'm going to give you about applying these rules minus 1 to the power n divided by n converges to 0 and the other is uh, some complicated looking expression like this log of 1 by log of 1 plus n plus 5 n squared by 1 plus n squared divided by 1 plus 1 by n to the power 2 n. What does it converge to? Okay. So, let us work out what, what these numbers are. Okay. Let us take the first one. So, this is uh, an alternating thing again. So, the first few terms here are uh, minus 1 by 1 uh, minus minus 1 by 2 uh, minus 1 by 3. So, this minus minus 1 is just plus. So, I will just write a 1 half then 1 fourth minus 1 fifth and so on. So, you can see as the numbers increase as n increases these numbers actually come although they oscillate about 0, but they come closer and closer to 0 right. You can keep going. How do I prove this? Well, you can apply the sandwich principle. First, let us look at 1 by n we know that 1 by n tends to 0 that was something that we described before not given a proof because I have never defined what is the limit, but this is something we know and we can intuitively feel. Well, now if you multiply the entire thing by some constant c then it will uh, go to c times the limit. So, if I multiply this by minus 1 this goes to 0 and now let us look at this sequence. So, you can call this a n you can call this b n both of them tend to 0. So, you call the sequence that you have as C n <coughs> and you can see that uh, ah maybe I should call this A n and I should call this B n and you can see that C n is between A n and B n and now if you apply the sandwich principle this goes to 0, this goes to 0. So, this also goes to 0 Okay, that is how we prove this. I am giving, I mean, there is many ways of doing this, but I am giving you one way. Okay, how about the second one? Okay, so for the second one, um, <coughs> this is slightly harder, and I, I because it is not directly explained from the rules that I gave you, but I want to do it because I want to sort of explain what is going on. So, let us look at log of 1 plus n. Well, n tends to infinity, what happens to log of 1 plus n? It moves very slowly, but it goes to infinity. Okay, this so this sequence diverges to infinity. Okay, this tends to infinity, so diverges to infinity. Okay, well here's a fact. So if that happens, one by this goes to zero. Okay, so 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 this part. Uh, so I know something about the first term on the numerator. What about five n squared by one plus n squared? This is interesting. Okay. So, here if you can you can look at numerator and denominator both separately 1 plus 1 by n squared goes to 1. Okay. So, that means uh, here is a sequence. So, I have 5 divided by 1 by n squared plus 1. So, this tends to 5 by 1 which is 5. Okay. Aha. And now I have so the numerator I have I, I have kind of I have understood what happens right. So, if I call this a n if I call this b n so, I know what happens to a n, a n goes to 0, I know what happens to b n, b n goes to 5. So, a n plus b n goes to 0 plus 5 which is 5. So, the numerator goes to 5 and let us look at the denominator. So, the denominator is 1 by 1 plus 1 by n by whole to the power 2 n looks very complicated right, but I can rewrite this as 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power n squared and now I know what this term inside is. This term inside exactly goes to the number e. This was one of the things that we saw. So, this goes to e squared. 
Okay. So, in other words this converges to 5 by e squared. Again I am applying that if you take two sequences a n by b n, a n tends to something, b n tends to something which is non 0, then a n by b n tends to uh, the ratio of the corresponding limits. Okay. So, it goes to 5 by e squared. Okay. So, this is how you, you are going to apply these uh, rules and uh, uh, known examples in actual limits. Okay. So, I, I hope this video gives you an idea of how to, what is a limit and how to compute limits okay, using these rules. Uh, so, thank you.